Furwind is an adventure platformer developed by Boomfire Games and published for the Switch by John Dusoft. Furwind is also a box. That is right. 2019 seems to be the year of the fox on the Nintendo Switch. And I welcome our foxy overlords. A great evil has been awakened and threatens to destroy the balance of nature. Enter Furwind, our hero and champion. The game begins a lot like Shovel Knight, starting with a standard platforming level that, when you clear it, opens up into an overworld that allows you to navigate between levels and decide your own path through it. There are three main chapters. In each one, there's a set of goals you need to achieve in order to unlock the main boss in that area. That means that you don't have to do everything in each area to continue. There's a variety of different kinds of levels as well. First, there's the core levels. In these, you have to hunt down two mini-bosses that guard two pieces of a talisman that you need to be able to exit through a portal. Each of the level's mini-bosses are the same, and I've even seen them reused in different levels. So the battles can be a little underwhelming. Finding your way through the level is fun though, since they aren't your standard left-to-right path. They feel like they're ripped right out of a Metroidvania, except you can go down any path at any time. You'll have to search for the two bosses, and also search for hidden keys that unlock other challenge levels. Well, are they like permission slips? And finally, the portal to exit the stage. Each level has a couple save points too. They'll cost you some in-game currency to use, so you can actually take a chance and skip these save points so you can save up more money for the upgrade shop later. It's your choice. It's only 10 gems, so I think it's worth it. I, I died a lot. And there can be a lot of frustration if you die and then not only have to continue from a point, but you have to continue and beat the boss again or go find one of the challenge keys again. So I really think they're worth it. Um, you can even reuse a save point. It'll cost you 20 gems the next time. Um, but if you feel like you beat a boss or found something that you don't want to do again, it's worth it. Again, don't chintz out. Save your progress. You will thank me later. Speaking of the challenge keys, they unlock the challenge levels, which I found to be the most fun. They're small, but tough, and a nice break from the regular full-size levels. You're tasked with either fighting off a small horde of enemies, or platforming in some pretty ridiculous ways. I mean, look at this. It's like someone's Mario Maker level. Each one has an orb you first have to get to, and then exit the level with. If you die at any point, you have to start all over from the beginning of that level. There's no save points in the challenge levels. In the first area, my favorites are the underground stages where a flock of fireflies are your only source of light. Unfortunately, they get distracted by these crystals and leave you one by one until you either find another firefly nest to replenish them or, well, you're eaten by all the things. One of the challenge levels is a stage just like this, with not even a single enemy in it. You simply start in the middle of the cave and have to find the right path out of it before you meet an untimely fate. It is terrifying, but it's fun. The prison levels involve Furwin trying to rescue characters from a swinging jail cell by defeating all the enemies on the screen. These are also small. In fact, they're single screen experiences, and when you free the prisoners, they'll help you on the rest of your quest. The first prisoner is the merchant, who then allows you to purchase valuable upgrades from him. Wait, didn't I just bust you out of jail? 300 gems for a health upgrade? Where's your gratitude, man? Get, you know, get, get back in there. Get, 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 get in here. You are no longer free. Go we'll find someone else to save you. Now, there's plenty to do in each area, but you don't have to do everything. When you've acquired the minimum requested orbs, talismans, and saved prisoners, then you can take on the main boss. You know what? Okay, fine. Fine, you can get out. Come on, get out. I need to fight the boss, okay? Just lower your prices, man. Please. The bosses are pretty challenging. It took me a dozen tries to beat the first one, an octo-eyed spider. But it forced me to learn all the extra powers I had, like the acorn bomb and the air dash, because there's simply no way to beat it without them. Slay the boss and move on to the next area. I do recommend completing as many of the optional levels as possible before moving on. They're fun, but the gems you collect in each one of them can be used to purchase upgrades to make you stronger for the rest of the game, and therefore make it easier to tackle. 
Get past all three areas and find out how the story ends. And that's Furwind. Overall, I had fun with it. It's not the best platformer I've ever played by a long shot, but the level design is creative and I got completely engrossed in trying to unlock all the levels to complete them. It has a lot of graphical charm, but I do have one question though. What is up with Furwin the Fox? He isn't animated very well and exudes very little personality while you play. He plays really stiffly too, and his proportions seem a bit off. Except for his tail whip. There's nothing particular about him, nor any reason he needs to be a fox. I don't know, contrast him with Lucky from Super Duper Lucky's Tale, and you'll see what I mean. Furwind isn't so much a fox who becomes a hero, but more of a hero that just happens to be a fox. Does that make sense? Give it a try. Furwind hits the eShop on June 27th for $9.99.